Okay, cool. So I just described to you guys the, the, the portion of the parable of the sower that um, is on the thorny ground. Like people who, the cares of this world, tarry them from true worship of God and they are classist, essentially. It's on Dwayne, no place for that. So can you identify yourself in that? Do you think no Christian should suffer? And is Garabo's life taxing to you? Because, oh my goodness, where is she living? What is that? And why doesn't she even have solar? Exactly. Ugh, girl, get a candle or something. Get a lantern. Ugh, ugh, girl. Get generator power. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit of a thing. Guys, it's really all up in everybody's grill. It makes your head look big. Um, stop it. Girl, we don't want to hear it. You're poor. Like Coconut Kelly in this one movie. Uh, this woman walks into Gucci store there was Anton Square or Nelson Mandela Square and she like her cart declines and she grabs the bags and she's like uh, please bring the bags back and then tells the next customer that's coming on some be careful don't touch her you might just catch her poor yeah you have Christians that feel that way about the suffering church don't touch Garabo you might just catch her poor so at this point I feel like King Naman who's got leprosy and I have to keep on telling people I'm clean I'm clean I'm clean I'm clean uh, so they can just avoid me and then I like knock on the door of like uh, Elijah and I want to be clean help me and then God makes me bathe in the river Jordan and I come out with skin looking like a baby's bottom all over the show and I'm like who's unclean now <laughs> like Naaman was a king yet he had leprosy well, what it is that these people do to the poverty stricken in the church is they convert actual kings because that's what a Christian is a royal priesthood we are kings and queens you know in the second order of Melchizedek we are priests a holy priesthood we are royalty and our robes are unseen for they are spiritual that are royal and so because they don't see our our we are treasure in jars of clay because they don't see how valuable we are inwardly you know the the inner man is ever being renewed even though the outward man is perishing we are just these like eternal glories walking about for we will be glorified after being justified hallelujah okay mm. we're essentially royalty sparkly fresh looking like diamonds walking around but only if at all you have worn your spiritual goggles that's the only time you can see them so you're like a king but on earth you are robed in lowly attire you are treasure in a jar of clay nothing of you to gaze upon like christ in and of himself there was nothing of him to gaze upon that men might favor him and yet he was a king you understand when he was walking among us so just like naman walking around unclean unclean he's the king and yet people avoid him because he's got leprosy well christians are just like naman people imagine us unclean for we have got leprosy or a, a, a proverbial psychological leprosy and they don't want to touch us when we're poor when we're suffering especially when we're suffering as christians but just like naman and just like lazarus upon dying entering into a abraham's bosom naman washed got bathed in the river jordan hmm? where it is that elijah in and of himself entered into rest with a chariot of fire collecting him at the river jordan it's so prophetic so here it is that we are also at the river jordan as christians waiting for the rapture waiting for our death for the lord to come and collect us etc and in that season in the run-up to we're wearing these like rags that are not seemly or sightly at all and people expect us to say unclean unclean as we walk in the streets because we are the ten amount of spiritually leprous until god sends a charge through elijah to tell us to go and dip ourselves body and seven times body and all and hair in the river jordan and come out with fresher clearer more beautiful skin than baby's bottoms hey eh? like that naman bathing at the river jordan is so depictive of the rapture coming out with an incorruptible body it is written of naman's skin that when he came out he, it was f more beautiful even than that than, than like a grown-ups like his skin was like that of a baby all over the show when he historically was like a leper so the rapture is going to separate the wheat from the tears we're going to come out of the river jordan after being dipped in it seven times seven of which is also depictive of the seven year tribulation when we're in heaven while the rapture no the, the tribulation is um unfolding here on earth and we're gonna come back with christ in glory on those horses to reign with him 1000 years in these bodies that are never aging like babies forever and clean and clean historically previously you rejected us and now we have bathed seven times in the river jordan and we we we, we, we cute now we cute where before we were like you know unclean unclean yeah the thorny church the church that is on the thorns undermine the kinghood of naaman they undermine the kinghood of believers of christians people who actually hold a royal estate and yet we, being treasure in jars of clay were undermined here on earth and the day is going to come when god is going to bathe us seven times 
Jones and the River Jordan were gonna come out looking like, hey, what? Is that Karaza? Goodness gracious, girl, who the thunk get you so flying now? And I'm like, amen. Mm, the Lord done did that for me. That's what's good. So the health, wealth, and prosperity movement gospel has given these guys oomph and boosting, and it's caused churches with health, wealth, and prosperity ministers to be teeming at the folds with rich people who want to maintain their arrogance, their um, lack of humility because of their riches. Not every one of them is indeed that way, but a lot of wealthy people um, lack humility, right? They they want a church that's going to help them maintain and upkeep their lack of humility uh, towards the general cause that God has for mankind. Just a care and a recognition that you are all lowly, meager, fallen, debilitated, and in dire need of the redeeming blood, the redeeming power of the name of Jesus. You need Christ. All of you are pitiable, absolutely hollow, not an ash, uh, all the way from the lowliest among you to the loftiest. The greatest in the kingdom of heaven will be the least on earth and vice versa. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. Yeah, well, they refuse to acknowledge their triviality in the sight of God, and so therefore, they ought to humble themselves. And so they flee flood to churches, they flock to churches that keep on pontificating a wealthy Christian as the only thing that makes sense out here. And so these people have a general underestimation of poor people on the ground, including the poverty stricken church, which is literally all littered about the earth all over the show. They imagine themselves more highly favored. And so their doctrine is of course a bereft of a veracity. They are anathema in what it is that they believe in. And these guys gathered for themselves these wealthy prosperity preachers to help them feel like they're truly blessed because they don't want to go to hell because they grew up in Christian households where Gogo kept on preaching the gospel they don't want to walk away from their first love they want to walk away from Christianity so they find a church that's going to say your wealth is the best thing that ever happened to you and this thing that apparently was the best thing that ever happened to you and then causes them a very classist constitution that makes them underestimate the rest of the body of Christ that's suffering so I'm not saying that being wealthy is wrong I'm just saying that there is a section of wealthy people on the earth that are in the church that thoroughly believe that their wealth is a is the is, is the thing that equates them or puts them in right standing with Christ. It is the thing that means that they're born again. And that, of course, is just a doctrine of demons. It's anathema. It's a destructive heresy. And these are the guys on the thorny path. Okay, cool beans and bananas. So can you recognize yourself in that? Are you sitting, Ereima, are you sitting as like a, a very esteemed member of some mega church in your country without any real piety, holiness, humility? Do you think you're the best thing since sliced bread? Do you think you've arrived? Do you think everybody must bow down to you because you that millionaire? If so, repent. Repent and recognize yourself as actually pitiable and poor uh, and, and, and therefore in dire need of being spat out of the mouth of Jesus Christ because your wealth and your riches ought to be gathered in heaven. The wealthy are the most in danger, frankly, because it's written in God's word that it is easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So these guys are the ones that think they've arrived especially because they feel like their blessedness is from God. It might be, but it's not always the case. Abanye, they are involved in Imshiga Shiga, and uh, savory business practices, racketeering, money laundering. God, they are blessed and highly favored. Okay, cool beans and bananas. And then the last uh, conglomerate of guys over here, let's move on to the last part. I hope it's the last.